Okay, so the main objective of this work is to evaluate the linguistic uncertainty in the context of AHP-based GIS MCDA. Of course, this is Luis Ideas. This work is pro proposes a systematic method to select a classification scheme with a special meaning and to quantify the accuracy of the most sensitive layers. It is based on the results presented by Teltafoli and Sanchez in 1997. And we are illustrating our approach through the case of a study of coastal vulnerability mapping in Yucatan, Mexico. So as all we know, every collaborative process involves some kind of linguistic uncertainty, in particular in the selection of the most meaningful spatial representations. So in the case of classification, it implies a set of abstractions and subjective reasonings because we have different classification schemes and different classification codes. So it's important to consider the imprecise and context dependent meanings that arises from all the participants. The AHP was applied to generate vulnerability index for three components of vulnerability, such as exposure, sensitivity, and resilience. And in particular, we are focusing here the presentation to the exposure index. Um, the exposure AHP was uh, obtained in different workshops with biophysical experts on exposure to hurricanes. And in the first step of our methodology, we obtained the vulnerability index through the linear weighted combination of the weights and the standardized scores of all the attributes for each unit of observation. This, in this case, was they were pixels. So the standardized score was obtained through a value function that changes the natural scale of each attribute to a linguistic scale. And it's important to emphasize that the desired state here was uh, zero the utopian state of absence of vulnerability. And the second step was to obtain different uh, maps with, for different classification methods. We have in this case for the three categories, for the three categories case, three, uh, five maps. And if we see the statistics, we can see that the most heterogeneous one in, in the number of pixels are a progression factor Weber uh, 1.3 and 1.5. We are using the Weber Fresnel law for these uh, categorizations. And we also can see that the mean and median value are not so different. So we can use uh, the mean as a, as a measure of central tendency. And the, in the third step, the, the question is, what is the change required to switch between categories low and high and medium and high? So the change for, the, for attributes was calculated in terms of the equation of the left is tau. And to have a more uh, uh, natural way of measuring this, the sensitivity coefficient with is the inverse value of tau was calculated. So this is uh, we can say that this is a general uh, sensitivity analysis because it is in terms of the measure of central tendency. And we can see in the results that given five attributes, uh, two of them are the most sensitive. These are uh, distance to mangrove and elevation. We can see also that we have uh, if we compare the progression factor 1.3 and 1.5, we have more feasible changes for 1.3. So it seems that maybe uh, Weber Fechner 1.5 is a better representation in this case. So we focus our attention on uh, the attribute distance to mangrove. That's because we have changes from medium to high that we don't have in, in the case of elevation. And those are the most important ones. So in the fine tuning sensitivity analysis for the most sensitive attribute, 
the question again was, what is the change required for each pixel to switch to the high vulnerability class? So we calculated the change for each pixel with respect to the minimum vulnerability value for the reference class, for the high vulnerability class. And again, we calculated the sensitivity coefficient. So finally, uh, the sensitivity coefficient was uh, was used to obtain the confusion matrix. In this case, we are taking into consideration as we are, we are saying that uh, the pixel with sensitivity coefficient higher than 10 are well classified, and the rest with a sensitivity coefficient higher than 10 are or may be bad classified. So we have a commission error of 17% and an omission error of 60%. And the most important uh, part here is that we have, as you can see on the right, 139 pixels that have a really high sensitivity coefficient. So the, uh, this methodology allows to verify where are located the, those pixels and if if it, if it is possible in, 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 to, to have this, this change, because maybe it's just a numerical uh, issue, but it's not in, in, real, in real life, it's, this is not going to happen. So just to summarize the methodology, first we obtained vulner the vulnerability index, then we generate and select, we generate different classification methods and select the most heterogeneous one. After that, a sensitivity coefficient in terms of, of some measure of central tendency was obtained. And finally, fine tuning sensitivity analysis for the most sensitive attributes was performed. So, um, the conclusions. The linguistic uncertainty inherent to participatory workshop was addressed by applying sensitivity analysis to the land classifications. The results proved to be useful to the stakeholders in identifying the classification scheme that best conveyed the coastal zones differential exposure to hurricanes. And even that this approach was applied to vulnerability indica indicators, it can be implemented to any HP-based EIS MCDA to identify how measurement errors of land attributes affect the classification of maps and to select the nominal map that conveys the best representation of a geographic phenomenon. And I think I was <laughs> so quick. That's everything. Thank you. So you're just at the where I'd be giving you the two minute yeah. warning. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, that, that's good. Um, do we have do we have any questions? Elena, why did you choose the particular? It was like one point five or something is like the cutoff. Okay. If because that's because if we look at the At the five representations here, we have two that were the most heterogeneous ones. And then the selection was in terms of the sensitivity coefficient. So we choose the one which has the less sensitivity coefficient value. So if you see uh, uh, one point of factor, you, can you, you have one, two, three, four, five changes, visible changes and the coefficients are, high, are higher than 1.5. So we selected the less sensitivity cases. And then how did, I guess I don't follow, how does that follow, go back to the other image where you had Sorry. the, can you go back to the other one that had the, go back one more. Um, yes. The one that had the, the different lines, the, like the GIS interpretation. Okay, this one. Yeah, this one here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm not as familiar with the GIS. What does, what does the, the different lines mean? 
Ah, yeah, we have this one. Each of, each one of these is a map. It's a different representation of the vulnerability with uh -huh. three categories. So you have different, you can generate a lot of classific, uh, a maps, a lot of maps in this case. So you can use equidistant uh, classification or the, in this case, this that is web professional with different progression factors. So each one of the lines is a map. And the question is, which is, which one of these is the best representation with a with a special meaning? That makes that makes more sense now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>